Hey y'all, Justin Lakai at Catfish. Well, I'm out here today on Fort Loudon Reservoir and I'm looking for bait today. I've had a lot of requests, people wanting me to do some videos, show you how I'm catching bait, especially here in the winter months, what I'm doing, where I'm looking for them, etc. And so, you know, typically in the winter months, I use a lot of shad. It's a good cold water bait. And unfortunately, a couple weeks ago, I snagged my cast net and lost it. And I'm still pissed off and bitter about it, so I haven't bought another one yet. So today, what I'm gonna be doing is using some jigs to just basically catch whatever I can catch to use for bait. Now, I'm in a creek today, and I came out here with my ultralight rod, and I came out here with a uh, rod that I'm gonna troll with as well. And I'm going to start out trolling just due to the conditions. Our water temps here are 47 degrees right now, and it is a cloudy, cold day. It's air temps in the low 40s right now, and it's been cloudy all day. The sun hasn't been out. So the water back here in the back of this creek, it's not going to have heated up at all. So I'm assuming, just based on the conditions, that fish are probably going to be a little deeper. So that's why I'm going to start out trolling, just trolling real slow, 0 0.3, 0 0.5 miles an hour, keeping my jigs toward the bottom. I'll be using a series of just three jigs. I'm gonna use a three inch Berkeley Gulp Minnow, and I'm just gonna start at the back of this creek and kind of work my way out. It's a fairly long creek, and it's got some depth to it. It's about 40 feet out here toward the mouth of it. So I'll just get back here. We'll make our way out, see how it's going. If I'm catching fish, great. We'll keep doing what we're doing. If I'm not, then I'll go ahead and start working these docks down through here. Some of these docks, you know, they're out far enough off the shore. They've got some uh, depth to them off the end. We'll start casting the jig with the ultralight rod. We'll cast it around there and see what we can get there. But, you know, I've, like I said, I've had requests, these videos that I have posted in the past of me catching bait, not really popular. They don't get a lot of views, but I have had some requests. So we'll do another one here today and just hopefully help you all out and hopefully help myself out here with some bait today. Let's get to it. Right here, folks, that's what we really want to see. That's probably some cats right there. And you can see just a massive school of something, probably shad, right there that they're under. I wish I had my cast net on a day like today. I would take advantage of that right there. All right, folks, here's the setup. That is just an old Billy Westmoreland rod. It's a medium action graphite rod. I've had that thing 20 plus years. I've got a Daiwa Regal 2500 series reel on there. It's spooled with 20 pound test braid. And on that, I have a leader here. And this is, I don't know, three foot or so of leader line that is 15 pound fluorocarbon and I've got three jig heads on there with three inch gulp minnows. Uh, we're allowed to use three hooks per line here in Tennessee so that's why I've got three on there. Now down here toward the bottom I've got some larger pieces of split shot just to give it some extra weight and help keep it down there near the bottom as I'm moving along. But I'm just gonna take these jigs, just they're tied in a series here, about a foot apart each, and we'll work it down near the bottom as we move along in that kind of 0 0.3, 0 0.5 mile an hour range. All right, start letting out some line here. Let it sink down. Starting out here in about 13 feet. Basically, I'm just going to be feeling here. I'm going to be feeling for it to bottom. I don't want it dragging bottom, but I want to feel it on bottom so then I can reel up and know that I'm just off the bottom. If you let them jigs drag bottom with that exposed hook, you're in for a bad day. You're going to stay snagged. Something else I'm gonna do as I work on getting bait today is suspend a bait for catfish. I've got some crappie left over from my last trip. It was in the cooler there. So I'm gonna drop it down and suspend it a few feet off the bottom as we make our way out of this creek. Fish, there's one. Felt him hit it. Well, oh, he's gonna to dig too now. Look at that, buddy. Woo! I don't know what we got, but he's a pulling. Goodness now. Maybe a white bass or a striper or something. Yeah, buddy. Never know what you're gonna catch doing this technique right here. Could be bluegill, crappie, white bass, largemouth, smallmouth, stripers, catfish. 
everything will hit a small jig. That's why when I'm doing this with the bigger size gulp minnows, just because you never know what you're going to hook into, I like to use a little bit heavier line. Like I said, my leader, I believe it's 15 pound test fluorocarbon. It's either 12 or 15. I can't remember. It's a spool I've had forever. Basically, just use it for leaders. This thing's a digging, I'll tell you that, man. But I'm just out here today just looking to catch something to use for catfish bait tomorrow. I've got a couple crappie left in my cooler from the last trip, and I want to make sure I've got some fresh bait for tomorrow and make sure I got plenty of it in case I get on. I need to go buy me another cast net. I'm just so dang pissed off about losing my other. Every time I lose a cast net, which is way too frequently, I always say I'm done with it. But that's the last one I'm going to buy. Because really, you know, I like using shad in the winter months. But the rest of the year, I don't really care for it. So it's hard to, hard to justify I keep throwing expensive cast nets down to the bottom of the river. <laughs> These jigs are cheap to replace if I break off on them. I'm excited to get this thing up here. It's a bigger fish, I'll tell you that. He's putting a bend in that rod. That's a medium action rod right there. It's a old Bass Pro Shop Billy Westmoreland rod. I love this rod. I've had it since I was a teenager. I use it when I'm out catching white bass and skipjack and doing bass fishing, things like that. I still don't know what this thing is. It may be a catfish. I don't know. Oh gosh, it is. Look there. We trying to get bait to catch blues and I'm catching blues on my bait rig. <laughs> Let's get a hold of this old thing without breaking my line. Y'all, that right there ain't a bad fish, man. That's one of them I'd call a fun size. But that'll show you. You see that baby eat right there? Three inch gulp minnow. This cold water, 47 degrees. You gonna get them on the smaller baits. He ate him that little, that little jig right there pliers get that thing out there if I can hold him out far enough to get him in the camera that's a fairly big fish I got my measuring board with me here in the hatch let me get it out and we'll throw him on the board yeah you know that fish right there well he's sliding that one right there is if he'll lay his tail down he'll be over 33 inches almost 34 inches good fish my bait rod <laughs> all right y'all one last look at him there nice blue cat on my bait rod let's let him go going out of here buddy there you go massive school of shad right there basically from the surface down to about 24 feet I'd be surprised if we hook into something right here something's gonna be under that school of shad Fish, fish right there. Got another one under that school of shad. I knew you get a school of shad that big, there's gonna be some fish under it. Oh, it's another catfish. <laughs> Not what we need. It's what we need to catch. But I need bait to go get the big ones. Just a little feller here. He also ate the top minnow. Open up. I'm gonna rip my minnow now. There you go. Little thing. <laughs> All right, let's drop them jigs back down there. Yeah, them catfish there, they're under the shad, but everything else will be too. Fish, there's one. Fish on. Popped it, buddy. You just felt thump. 
Kind of feels like it might be another dang catfish. Here I am trying to get catfish bait and catching the catfish. <laughs> I could be wrong, but it kind of feels like one. It is. Another dink blue cat right there. On a jig. <laughs> That's three catfish and no bait. <laughs> there he is. Little fat feller. Look how swollen his stomach is. He's been down there eating good. Let's let him go. He'll get big for me. We'll do it again someday. There's fish. Got. That's a bluegill. Ain't my favorite bait, but by gosh, when you need bait, beggars can't be choosers. You can see what I've done here is I've switched rods. I've got my ultralight rod here. I'm about to lose him. But I've put on some smaller jig heads and one inch gulp minnows. Get him, throw him in the cooler there. But I've put on these smaller jigs to try to entice a bite. I figure if those catfish are keyed in on the smaller baits, everything else is too. So I made another run here to the back of this creek. And I'm gonna make another pass through here with these smaller jigs see what happens that crappie I've got that piece of crappie I've got on my catfish rod ain't been touched but we got those three catfish on the gulp minnow so that tells me they're wanting a smaller bait today and if they're wanting a smaller bait probably the white bass and maybe the drum those fish that I'm hoping to get for bait, they're probably keyed in on smaller baits too. Fish. There we go. Oh, it's a dang channel cat. Man, I can't get away from these catfish today. I got bad news for this one. Since I'm out here for bait and I am having a hard time with it, this one will be bait. Come tomorrow. Sorry, buddy. I try not to use you. The hard times, desperate measures. You're gonna get cut up tomorrow. There he is. Ate them jigs. Y'all, right now I'm kind of at the back of this creek. And I've trolled up a little ways and then I just there's a light breeze I'm just using this wind to kind of push me back it's moving me at like 0.2 so that's perfect I'm just drifting down through here just waiting I've got them jigs just kind of just off the bottom it's waiting on that thump uh, I had one right there a little tap fish Another one. Oh, it's another dango channel cat. Y'all, sometimes things just don't go as planned. He is going to get all tangled up in them jigs. <laughs> he's going to have them wrapped around every which way. I got bad news for this one. He's going in the box too. I get all these things untangled from him here. Marking all this right here, y'all. If you can see that there on the graph, maybe a glare. That's some shad right there, most likely, real deep. Between 12 and looks like about 18 feet of water. I'm sitting in 19 feet right now. I just trolled up. Now I'm going to start drifting back again. There we go. Hello. He's going to pull a little bit now. We want to bet this is another channel cat or something channel or a small blue I'd almost bet money on it <laughs> we can't stay out of them things today 
come out here hoping to get some yellow bass or white bass or maybe a drum and show you how I do it because I get so many questions about it and this is a technique here that I often use in the cold months just kind of slow trolling jigs like this and I come out here to do it today and can't catch a nary one of them white bass or yellow bass can't even find them but we get these catfish non-stop oh oh no oh, I don't believe that's a channel cat y'all that's what we're looking for that's one of what we're looking for it's a little drum oh yeah come here buddy I want you you're what I need no oh, no 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 don't break my line now don't break my line careful here because I switched over to my ultralight rod when I started using these smaller jigs there we go all right oh he just broke my line too right there yeah y'all look at that nice little drum that'll make a good bait for tomorrow heck yeah that's what I was hoping to kind of that's one of them fish I was hoping to find out here had to switch over to my ultralight rod and downsize to get him. But that's all right. We adapted. Adapted to the conditions and got it done. Right here is it's about to start pouring down rain. <laughs> Be cold and wet. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe he didn't break my line. I thought he broke me off. All right, man. Let's throw him in the box there. Heck yeah. All right, y'all, it's starting to sprinkle a little bit here, so I'm going to go ahead and put this camera up and wrap up the video. Today's trip, it didn't really go as planned. I'd hope to get into some white bass or yellow bass or maybe a few drum and just kind of show you the process. You know, this technique here, this kind of slow trolling, I use this a lot during the winter months. In the spring, summer, fall, when the water's warm, I like to troll fast. I'll troll spoons and jigs at a faster rate of speed. And pick off active fish but when the water's cold like this you know 47 degrees here today you really got to slow down and you know today i came out here hoping to get the white bass yellow bass and uh, just couldn't find them but i got that drum and had a dang good time with that big blue cat i caught on them jigs but the technique even though today's trip didn't really go as planned i didn't get the species i was after I'm going to go ahead and post a video anyway just to kind of show you the technique because the technique is solid. It's one of those things, even if you're not after bait like I was today, if you just want to go out and have a good time and catch some fish, this technique will put you on fish year round. It don't have to be in the winter. You can do the same kind of slow trolling technique in the summer months too and still wear the fish out. It's just a year round thing that will always put you on fish. And today it just happened to be that the catfish that we couldn't get away from. But anyway guys, I had a good time out here, but it is starting to rain. I'm going to have to put this camera up and I will see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.